five. Reynolds versus Mana. I would be terrified as Mana right now. Like, he just watched Reynolds shut down Showtime three to zero. The bomb right. I want to hear it in the chat, guys. Not every day we do a grand final of one of our tournaments. This has been a fantastic event. So I want to hear who you're cheering on as we introduce the players. I want you to spam their names in chat. If you've got their emotes from somewhere, then spam those. I want to hear who you guys are cheering. As we have, to the bottom right-hand side, the blue Zerg from Italy. Currently teamless, looking into the new year and the new season of WCS. Is definitely one to keep your eyes on as he looks to qualify for BlizzCon in 2019. The 16-year-old Raynor in the bottom right-hand side. He's getting some hype from Flubs from Slowly Fallen in the chat. Scumbag Megumi is coming in with the Raynor hype as well. Mulefish has that Raynor mode from Pig. Raynor from Cafe Mungan as well. Okay, okay, okay. You guys are doing all right. The top left-hand side... We have our red Protoss play here in the Grand Finals from Team Liquid. Let's hear it if you're cheering on Mana. In game number one of this best of five final. Let me go and update stream title. Something I just forgot to do in the downtime. Let's get this up and underway. Misfit Shaman cheering on Mana right here. Got some stat types from Grazzle in the chat. Mana na na says NT Edge. Go go Mana Rangers from Jerry Zero. Mecha Piggy thinking Reno's gonna take this 3 to 1. I'd love to see a non free zero grand finals. Honestly, if I get anything out of this today, I'd love to see the grand finals. Just go past three games. Fire Council drops in on the main. There's going to be seen a couple of links chasing down a probe around this right hand side as well. So this probe is going to be chased out in towards the center. Overlord from Reno. Obviously, it's going to be back and away from the front. The Twilight opening. Rather than a Stargate, man, I've thrown a curveball at the start of the series. Reynolds just played against a Stargate opening three games in a row. So, man, I'm going to test him in a little bit of a different way here. And as you see, this is Overlord already taking a little bit of a damage. Ling's trying to get in, and that's actually really annoying. Because now two Ling's show up. They're going to see this Twilight Council. So, Reno always just so frustrating, even with his first few units. Looking to poke in, and now he gets that confirmation that Twilight Council is down. Good info there. As a Dark Shrine will follow this up into that Robo facility as well. So man is looking for the DT drop into Archons. Obviously, you'll generally get two War Prisms with this to really apply pressure on double angles. And also, you can then join them up together and go for, like, the Mega Archon drop to see how much you can do with that as well. Loads of love in the chat for Rain. We'll still get you. Cheering Reynor on as well. Awesome to see. Robo Facility is uh, finished up on the natural. As we're going to be seeing those Zerglings coming over to the left. Again, Dark Shrine is about to finish. And a few extra gateways on the way down. So, Archon's going to be coming in shortly. And we do see a couple of Lings being picked off. And we're trying about to finish up with the natural expansion here. Queen's going to throw down the inject, and the third hatchery from Raynor is also up and about to be queened as well. So, injects galore as we also have the Warpers moving out onto the map. Raynor sees this, but Raynor kind of knew anyways, right? You don't see a Twilight Council every day and not expect a DT open. I mean, I guess the one thing you could have expected outside of this would have been a uh, maybe potentially like a Glaives play. Maybe he wouldn't have expected that. Maybe that's something which is. Yeah, which kind of, you know, builds us into something nice for him to have seen. First DT warping in, a couple of DTs warping in. We see all of them getting set to go. A couple of links picked off. Obviously, Spore Crawl's already. Roach is coming out. No less, so Reynold has to be absolutely 100% sure he can defend his Spore Crawlers. 
cannot allow those to get targeted down, but actually manages to say is okay, well, you know what's up, you know what's happening, not even going to try with the Dark Templar, just immediately goes into the two Archons. As he brings them up to the top side, Roaches and Queens pushing that back. Again, Raynor is our defending champion of the Wardy TV Christmas Invitational. Last year, he also stomped through the bracket with a whole bunch of 3-0 finishes. Uh, he finished up uh, last year. He went 2-0 Bly, 3-0 Tier Lone, 3-0 Namshon. Very underwhelming game, it's not going to lie. Um, this year, he is also on track to just go 3-0 all the way through the bracket. He had a really rough group, barely made it out, but now today, 3-0 Gung Fu Banda, 3-0 Marine Lord, 3-0 Showtime. Just managed to go. But please don't freeze zero him, Reynor. Please give us a good finals. Come on, Mana. You can do this. You can take a game, I believe. You can take two. You can win this, Mana. Let's go. Nice. Archon's coming in. Roach is taking some damage. Queens as well. Just hanging out. All these Archon's are going to see Queens and Roaches. Coming down pretty swiftly here so far. Another Roach dropping down. Let's see the Archon's going to show up. And, uh... Yeah, not, uh... Not bad at all, as we're going to be seeing. All these Archon's just lifting up. And they are going to be going into the prisms, backing away out into the center. A couple of group teamers going down, and again, the roach is just hanging out on the front. Plus one missiles, roach speed coming in as well. And do you see those few zerglings from Reynold? Coming back up towards the top. The model going to be cruelly boosted out of this... Uh, Robo Yen Mana has just been building up into those a little bit so far. Hasn't gone into anything overly aggressive though. No glaives to push with. Oh my god, those Archons just found themselves a bunch of Queens. Queens will kill one of the two uh, War Prisms here. But you tell you what, if he drops an Archon on the low ground, he could maybe save this one, which he does. And then he could maybe recall the Archons if he wants to save them. Because otherwise he's definitely going to be... Oh, he could high ground lift them. <sighs> lift up the low health ones. This Archon goes for some drones. Oh my god, he drops the Archons back down. No one does a good opportunity there. High ground lifts one, drops it down. Doesn't quite save that one on the low ground, but only just barely not. Man is finding some insane damage at the start of this game number one. He is finding some crazy, crazy kills so far. As we see Zealots and a DT warping in. Archons are back. This is now 16 workers killed. And Mana is making one hell of a job out of this Archon drop. I mean, honestly, Mana doing a great amount of damage. But we have seen Reno against Showtime be a little bit behind. Not being the best of positions. But find his way back in the game. Archons dropping down. Lifting up again. Going to go hide away in the corner. Going to see that prism. Going to go hide right in the bottom right hand side. More, more gateways on the way up. More overlords building as well. And again, just a few more DTs on the way out. Dark Templar moves out into the center. And Reynor obviously has just been having to rebuild workers again and again and again. And even then, he's currently on 59 drones building more Roach Ravager. I wonder if the plan is to just try and win this game with some Roach Ravager in the very near future. Because otherwise, he's going to be very behind. He's going to be very tough to be kind of set on workers and so on. Even the Roaches are having a tough time against the Archons, though. More damage dealt in the main. And that's uh, where there's four drones going down. Was that just in the main base, too? Just splash damage? Must have been. Thought maybe something else was happening at the same time. Man, going to take a bit or make a big push out of this. Reno starts to rebuild drones, so maybe one's just building Roaches in preparation for an attack. You know, it's kind of, uh, you know, there's no winning, is there? You build drones, and then you don't have enough units to deal with an attack. You build units, and then you don't have enough drones to go into the later stages of the game. Which is kind of why maybe if you do build uh, units. It's better to make kind of more of a committed attack out of it, or more of a commitment to it. So it's Archon, Stalkers, and Mortals. All gathering up on this right-hand side. A few things are going to actually sneak their way into the natural. There's some potential to move up in towards the main base as well. These Immortals making their way through a couple of Zerglings here. Some things going down. Big Grove's killed. Nice little counter-attack considering there's just so few units. Didn't cost rain on much at all. Those Crows of Bows are good. And obviously, that's a lot of road drive and mana. I might have underestimated this a little bit. He's going to try and micro backwards as the Roach Ravager is starting to be a bit overwhelming. Oh no, Mana is just getting caught off guard like Showtime did as well. Attacking into just a ton of units that you really could have probably just avoided fighting for much longer into the game. He's still cleaning up these Roaches to some extent. Getting a few more kills as he continues to back off. Lings are now going to reinforce. Raynor is in full on kill mode. You see he's bringing the Lings across. He's building another couple of Roaches. 
He builds a Spire behind this as well. Mana. There's some extra Zolt out here, but his tech units have been reset to pretty much just two or three Immortals. And that is painful. Losing all but two or three Immortals makes it very difficult to continue on as a DT in the middle of the map gets picked off as well. Now Reynolds going to send some links down to the low ground there. Archon's Wolfen in will deal with that. As long as he can deal with the Roaches on the high ground at the same time. He's running by. Again, Archon's going to be very important for this. He sends the Zealots down, just leaving the Immortals to deal with the Roach Ravager force. Mana's fourth base going to be found by those few Zergs that are sneaking around. On the left, you see these Roaches and Ravagers still gathering up together. Going to find themselves immediately a good few Zealot kills. So a bunch of Zealots going down. And top side, these Zergs are still hanging out as well. Roaches and Ravagers push into this Nexus on the fourth base. Lings run by into the natural and into the main. Oh dear. Oh dear. Man is suddenly going to start taking a ton of damage. He's just going to chase down this army, bringing the Archons and the Brawl Prison to bring them nice up close and personal. Get that splash damage going. Obviously, Archons are pretty short range. Brawl still going down here. Zelda trying to try and deal with it, but this is now 14 workers killed. I'll tell you what, though, Man will have an army to counter attack with. He is already counter attacking, chasing these units down as he goes. The 18 probes are brilliant. It's still going up. These Zealots are just AFK in the main, not actually defending. He needs to sort that out as we see more High Templar warping in, ready to jump in towards Archons. Mana is still got the army to make this happen, guys. He's only 15 workers down. That's replaceable. Obviously, it would have been nicer to minimize that damage, but, well, this army of mana is still scary for Reno to deal with. Muta's on the way up. I mean, we saw that Spire coming down. I mean, the idea of Muta's is good, I think, but... The fact man is already on Reno's side of the map makes this actually kind of terrifying. Sends that one Zelda in to chase down the Queen. The queen goes down, he flips up the other Zelda, use them another day. Reno's fourth base completely exposed, not even mining though. That's how committed to the previous attack Reno was. That's how much he's scrambling to get back into this game after the initial Archons dealt so much damage. The fourth base will go down here. He is coming out, will find that War Prism. Mana knows about it. He's about to have Storm and plus three. I mean, right now, as long as he keeps the Archons alive, Mutas will not just be able to overwhelm this army, but he needs to keep the Archons safe here. Otherwise, those Mutas will just fly in and clean up the Immortals afterwards. Spine calls here as well as Mana presses in. Oh, Reno has still got a lot of army supplies. Here we go. Starting to jump onto those Immortals here. Mana pulling back. He's got a couple high tempo about to arrive. Storm is a few seconds off, though. Throws of Bows dropping across the map. Probes are going down. Mana's just going to recall, trying to fend against the Mutalisks. Plus three not done just yet. He gets one mute as it flies overhead. Man is down to 32 workers as Reno is still somewhat making this happen. No probes in the main at all. And a lurker den coming down from Reno on a low economy. Lurkers could be a real pain to deal with here for Mana. Stalkers obviously again do not have that bling, so using the Stalkers against these mutes is actually somewhat frustrating. He isn't able to chase down very easily. Roaches here in the corner have actually gone this base very low. Man down 27. I mean, he just needs to focus on building probes, surely. Again, just has no preparation for the mutas at all. Again, a group of probes is being chased down a high temple. He is going to get picked off as a very expensive kill, especially when you have about 23 workers left. And Mana has been forced into well, pretty much a point where he just has to say GG, I think. Because while he can try for another counter attack, I'm not sure if it's going to matter much with lurkers in play and all the rest of it. Man has not mined for a good half a minute or so, at least from this base. His final 21 workers desperately trying to bring him a couple extra units here and there. The Larkons left in the natural will have to come over as well. If he's going to push, he has to push with absolutely everything. He can't just try and hold off. He's going to try and rebuild probes. Surely there's no way. Man, Reynolds playing some, against soccer, uh, some insane StarCraft 2 today. Like some insane StarCraft 2. It's really been incredible to see Mutas coming in, poking those pylons. Mutas might move out over to the right hand side. Stalkers, Immortals, Archons, time play in the center. A couple probes going down as well. These Archons coming over too. We still see those mirrors being pushed out into the center of the map. Roaches from Raynor coming around the top side. Couple Light Templar do manage to morph into an Archon in time here. Raynor from behind is currently on his way back into this game. He has a lot of units across the map, but again, he's just super reliant on the Lurkers to defend and, well, hold position. And again, 
the army of mana is not really good to fight against lurkers. First couple of storms are good, no one's going to deny that, but then the lurkers are here. Oh, they're on hold position! Mana doesn't know! He doesn't have detection, now they fire! They'll push this back. Uh, I mean, maybe could have held a little bit longer, but... I mean, it doesn't really matter. Mana is still losing economy back at home. He is not pushing through over here. He's going to try and loop around to reposition. GG is called Raynor played one hell of a game from behind. And he's able to bring it up to a 1-0. To kick off into game number two. To the bottom right-hand side, we have our blue Protoss player down a map. This is Mana. Shout out to Maestro Mouse in the chat. Just bought the war chest with my link. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy the skins. Don't forget, of course, you can un unlock your skins while watching the stream. Every 20 minutes or so, you get about 50,000 XP that you have to click on to redeem. Level up that war chest while watching some StarCraft. To the top left-hand side, our red Zerg player. This is Raynor. Wardy, any chance you're going to be present at um, Home Story Cup? Uh, yeah, I'm always at Home Story Cup. I, I've been to every Home Story Cup for like the last three or four years or so. Mana here. Let's see what he can get up to. What he can bring us in this second game of the series. I'm not allowed to stop casting until you guys get all of that sweet XP, okay? How long do you guys need to unlock the war chest? 10 hours? Okay. We're, we're halfway there, guys. When is next home story cup? Not announced yet. Getting this going as you do see this overload of rain all heading down to the bottom right. Ten hour marble stream? No, we're not doing a ten hour marble stream, don't be silly. I meant to disable the extension when we're not streaming StarCraft 2 anyways. Just gonna be seeing this overload coming across again, just early game PvZ, nothing too much to discuss. Just getting this going. Again, a warm hello and a welcome to so many of you who are tuning in today. Again, the viewership is absolutely beyond expectation for this event. Um couldn't have dreamed it. Honestly, honestly, like, honestly, like, it's absolutely bonkers. It's absolutely bonkers. So great to see so many of you enjoying some great StarCraft. We've obviously had some great games in this Christmas Invitational. We've been casting a ton lately. So many events to do. I'm going to be doing even more events coming up into January. I have StarCraft planned again until mid-January. I've got StarCraft planned, and then we're going to have qualifiers coming up. So we're going to have StarCraft planned then. And then we'll have, uh, at the end of, the, uh, end of January, we'll probably do a... Uh, a little bit of a build-up into um, February with a tournament from Morty TV once more. I can never manage to show up in a timely manner, but I got the war chest just for you, Wardy, says Von Schleyer. Well, enjoy your building skins. Hope you enjoy them. Tell you what, guys, because you all being so awesome today, we'll do another couple of giveaways in the chat as well um, between games here. We'll do a uh, quick giveaway or so. And uh, give you a couple of other skins you can perhaps win. And uh, provided by Blizzard. 36 hour marble stream? No thanks. Thank you so much, Joseph Bound, for the five bits. Good luck and fun and happy holidays. Well, happy holidays to you as well. Can't believe today, tomorrow is Friday, and then it's the weekend leading to Christmas. It's like, what? When did that happen? When did that happen? I have no idea. So can someone, uh, someone remind me? Yeah, yeah. Robo facility drops down from mana up in the main base. As you see, Phoenix is able to latch onto this overlord pretty swiftly, and you want to be able to start picking this off. So overlord taking some damage. It's going to go down. Twilight Council, Robo facility all on the way up. Again, a few drones, a couple of overlords, a couple of queens on the way out. And that Evo chamber coming in. In the back of the natural expansion, plus one melee coming through. So Reno back in towards this Ling Star. We saw a bit of him with that during uh, his match against Showtime. Last game, he obviously played the uh, the Roaches, which is definitely a safer way to play when playing against a uh, Archon drop opening. The Roach is a little bit more stable than those Zerglings, obviously. This game, he saw the Stargate. He knows what's up, so playing the Ling Star that he loves to play. I mean, honestly, if I had to, you know, 
talk about one player in a kind of a plus one melee style, it has to be Reno. He's so good with those lings. He's always looking for the counterattacks. He's always looking for the openings, the counterattacks, and stuff like that. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. He's just so good with it, as we do see. Also coming in and just picking up a little bit uh, more damage. Forge and Temple Archives, again, very standard stuff at the moment, going towards uh, Archons. Going towards Archon, potentially Storm as well, if Mana can identify that uh, melee upgrade, which he has seen in the Evo Chain before. Storm is obviously very good against a lot of Lingus, but I guess also Archon's a little bit more reliable early on as well. You see an Archon drop going to be set up here on the top side to get going. Lings still gather together as the Observer just flying overhead on those Lings. Oracle flying past as well. Prism with the two Archons coming all the way to the top side as we do see the Lings nibbling on that Nexus for a moment or two. Really doing all too much though. More pylons on the way up here. Let's see what's this going. Prism pushed out from the natural expansion across to the right hand side. And Queen's just seeing a nibble. Oracle drops down the Revelation, and again, Mana not really finding much this game, so Reno keeping him at bay. It's funny though, because every time Reno's gone behind in CVPs today, he's just found a way back into the game. So, is it going to be more of the same right now, or what's going to happen as you see this Oracle just hanging out over on the left? Couple of Archons, doing some damage, and getting quite a bit done. Again, picking off some Zerglings, the Queen's taking some real damage as well. Well shot so far. Revelation dropping down on those queens and still just keeping track of where they go. Obviously the Zergons are better to keep track of as well. A fast Spire from Reynolds, the second game in a row he's going midders, but obviously a very different way to go middlesks this time around compared to what we saw previously. That Spire will be finishing in just a few moments again. A couple of crit tumors picked off by those Archons. Pressing in. They want to get rid of this. They want to push these Archons back. Archons lifting into that prism once more here. The prism's going to come all the way down the right side. A couple of high temple coming in. Some Zelda's been walked into. Revelation drops onto Lings and Queens. Phoenix up into the main base. Side storm on the way up on the Temple Archives. And Mortal on its way out. Mirrors are obviously going to be the one thing we're really looking at here to try and see how well Reynal can do in this game. Feeling's going to try and run by, only a couple get in. Still a nice couple. Obviously, man does have that star gear to build Phoenix off of. If you can just find out about the Mutalisks. But finding out about the Mutalisks currently proven to be a bit of a challenge. He hasn't been hallucinating at all. He hasn't really been flying around. And the Spy has gone completely under the radar. And his Warpism, in some ways, it's good. It's on the, his own side of the map rather than being aggressive because then the mutas won't pick it off. In some ways, it's bad because he won't see those mutas until they fly in and start killing a whole ton of his workers. Wings and Roaches will pick off this set of rocks here. So rocks going down. Fifth hatchery on its way in the back as well. Took this forward hatchery first. Means that fifth is a little bit easier to take. This establishes you the middle of the map control as well. And that's really important, actually. Uh, control in the middle of the map as we do see the mutas coming down. Hallucinated Phoenix coming across, but Mana a little bit late. He sees the mutas now. Cannons are on the way up. Mana has to begin responding as the first storm scares the edge of a couple of mutas, but nothing really crazy. Second storm isn't exactly brilliant too. That storm's better. And another storm, and another storm! Oh my god. Oh my god. Reynolds mutas are super low. Cannon actually shares off another of them. Wow, one more storm well placed could have killed a good few of those. Nice by mana so far, but now the Ling's coming across the map, and I tell you what, he just used his storms. Having just used his storms, defending against a whole ton of Ling's, that's not going to be easily done. Archon's found here immediately as well, so Reynor able to pick those two Archons up right away. And Dampus still coming forwards, Roaches, one Roach going down. Then we still pressing forwards as well. Meters coming all the way down to the bottom side there, that single Zealot chasing down the Roach. He's the bravest Zealot I've ever seen, not gonna lie. Stalker's here. 
on the back of the natural, ready to push those uh, uh, mutants away. Just a fire attack on the way in. Stalkers continue to deal and take some damage here. Archon shots, obviously very valuable in this position. Ooh. Has an Archon shot and a storm to bring that low. On the right hand side, Lings and Roach is coming in. Mana begins to respond. He gets the zealots up. The cannon's obviously helping out a lot as well. He's going to be seeing the mutas again. Going to be hit by a storm. As they get uh, driven backwards. More mutas in production. So Reno just looks to mass up this middle discount. Mana really starting to get the Phoenix up though. So starting to have a bit more of a response to this. Push back onto three bases. But that's something you just have to kind of deal with here realistically. Um, a lot of the time as a Protoss against mutas. Establishing a fourth base and control of your fourth base is very, very difficult. He's coming all the way over to the right-hand side. Lings and Roaches from Raynor. Up to the top. And again, the Mutilus looking for an opening, looking to fly in, try and maybe get more damage done. Mana is not really prepared in the main. His Phoenix Count is on the way up, remember, as his Phoenix there gets found. Phoenix should be able to deal with Mutilus if they can micro well enough, but that's an issue. Because right now his blink and his plus three attack upgrade are unpowered. And that's going to make this very difficult indeed. As Raynor playing a masterclass with these mutas at the moment. Jumps onto the Stargate. That's obviously a huge kill because now the Phoenix count can't increase any further. They just go down. And well, it does go down. And I guess what we were expecting. There's so many mutalists here. So many. Stops of two more Stargates in the natural. And honestly, I think he just didn't expect Raynor to make this many mutas in the first place anyways. Otherwise, he probably would have gone for an extra Stargate before now. You know, just kind of naturally. He's trying to deal some damage. Storm comes down. He's taking some shots. A couple of storms going down there. Mita still chased away. Phoenix. Having to be cautious. As we just try to go for the forge. We'll not quite be able to. Still a couple of archons off on the side. I'll just wait to try and grab those mutas. Doesn't manage to just yet. As again, the mutas escaping up the right hand side. Yeah, without really taking much damage. Now, Mana has got a fourth base up. Obviously, we'll have to rebuild his main nexus, rebuild his pylons here, too. Raynor set up with Banes and Ravages and Roaches. He's already pre split into. I kind of feel like Raynor thinks Mana is just going to be forced into an attack here. Like, he's almost like set up as though he's expecting one. So, uh, I wouldn't blame Mana if he did attack. I'd be frustrated as anything right now if this was me. It's such a frustrating amount of mutants to deal with. And, you know, it's not very fun at all. The Tide Templar walked into an arc on there, but. And he gets targeted down so quickly by those speeders as they just clear up everything that's setting up on this fourth base. There's just not enough anti-air right now. Blink isn't done yet. Plus three equal attack is just now repowered. And this new base that was built on the fourth is probably going to go down. The Archon Zone, the Mutalus is away for a moment, but I mean, it is a tap away from going down. You could breathe on that Nexus and it would fall apart. I mean, finally, a few of the Mutalus actually being killed. The Phoenix and the Stalkers combined did a good job of this. Oh, but now the Phoenix... Almost as though I cursed them. Phoenix just going to be in some more shots there. Loses a couple of meters to guarantee the kill on the Nexus already. And he's still a few meters being lost, but Mana is just being starved out of the game. He talking about meters and Raynor flying around and harassing and all this for a huge amount of time, but look at Raynor's bank. He has 6,000 minerals, he has 2,700 gas, and he can't build anything else because he's still waiting for Mana to come and kill some units. I mean, what does he even transition into after this anyways? He's had, the only thing I would say is maybe he should go into Hive already. There's no reason not to. He already does have the Infestation Fist. So there's really no reason not to go Hive, right? Like, you're not going to gain anything from holding off on it. He has the money to. It will be useful if Mana somehow claws it out. You guys want to see the resources lost? I don't think you do. It's going to be pretty disgusting. 10.3 to 6.7. It's not terrible, terrible, but... If it keeps up like that, obviously, Mana will not sustain because also Mana's been losing his economy. And losing his economy obviously puts us into real, you know, puts him into a really tough spot. Mutas coming down the left side. We're going to be seeing the Hive about halfway down the Hydra's den. Finishing in the natural as well in case he wants to make Hydras or maybe go into Lurkers. I know this seems to be going that Hive. I like it. Good lad. But yeah, I mean, just why take the risk? I mean, yes, you're probably going to win the game without it. If you can get it, you may as well, as Raynor is just going to be so rich that, I mean, he could just run billions into the Nexus if he wanted to. In fact, I kind of felt like he was going to originally. And his probes get taken down, 18 more workers lost. Mana will eventually just uh, lose a little bit more to these Banelings. 
20 probes down, but the Mews are back in on the fourth base as well. And the Mew Cam's been picked away at. He's replacing with Zerglings. And then the Hive, and. Well. This is rough. Why doesn't Reynold just make five more bases and consume the map? Well, I mean, honestly, he could. I mean, there's no reason not to take this base or this base, other than the fact that. I guess he actually just doesn't need them yet, is the one thing I would say. Like, he doesn't have drones oversaturated anywhere. So as long as he's still mining comfortably, there's no reason to expand here and here. It's just a base that may go down before he needs it, in which case it would become a bit of a investment that isn't then necessary. These units, obviously, I mean, yay, they're going down. In reality, they're kind of being sacrificed because Reno just wants to max up on other things. Mana is fighting bravely to stay in this game. 60 minutes in, but it's not looking pretty. It is not looking pretty at all. So when Stalkers start to blink off over to the right-hand side, we see some Lings coming down the left. Great Aspire is about to finish up. Thanks so much, Bloodcore EU, with the 100 bits. Will there be a hashtag charity stream? Um, not that I'm aware of. Unless you want to donate to the Wardy charity. And then it's always a charity stream. Oof, nice uh, pick off on those couple of Zergans here, blinking forwards, couple of Lings going down. I mean, this army coming down the right side, though, is just Banes, and... I, I mean, this is an army which Reynold kind of maybe doesn't even want as well. I mean, doesn't want... I mean, he made it. I just think he didn't know exactly what else to build. And the Banes, some of them going down the left side, a lot of them being held back, as he will just blow up well, the mineral line and then back away. I guess you don't need to blow up the Nexus if there's no probes anyways, right? So many links caught in a stasis here. Again, keeping these Bane lanes back is interesting. Mana's army is 100 to 126. Like... It's not impossible for Mana to take a really good fight and then kill Raynor maybe as reinforcements are coming in. But he would have to take a fight on Raynor's side of the map. Like, fighting on his own side of the map isn't going to work because then Raynor has all the time in the world just to rebuild. Honestly, at this point, Mana just needs to go. I, I'm not saying Mana's going to win. I'm not going to say he's going to make this happen. But, um... I mean, I just say, like, his army supply is decent enough to take, like, the first fight. The extra fights, then maybe not. Although, with Ultras on the way up, Reno's army is also becoming very, very good. That is still rebuilding probes, despite the fact he only has a natural and a fourth base. And this grab, I think my probe down here as well, also going down. You see the wave of Bane is now making their way down the right side. Bane's down the left, but realizes the army's here, so he's not going to jump on it. Reno just slowly picking his way up through these gateways. A couple of these. Stalker being chased down into the corner here and he's going to continue to pick up those kills. A couple Stalkers going down. Lings find two more probes out the front. Arkans will get those Ling kills, but Reynold doesn't care. Lings, he says? Do they even cost money as he holds down the Z key? Get Reynold. 8,000 minerals. Lings are what, 25 each? So we're talking about 4, 400 minerals, 44,000. We're talking about a solid uh, 30. Uh, 320 Zergans he could make right now if he wanted to. <laughs> or more, because his money, money is still going up. He's building Corruptors now, which I mean, moving to Broodlords and just end the game, I guess, but again, having a lot of fun while doing it. Having a lot of fun while doing it. And yeah, he's got Ultras on the map now as well, so. <laughs> Manus, I think the only reason Manus is in this game is not because he, think he can, thinks he can win. I think Manus is in this game because he just try be tries to think about what's he going to do in the next game. Really think about what his best option might be. Isn't this just playing with your food? Well, it's definitely not being nice to your food, is it? I'm pretty sure it's playing with your food at this point. It is a little bit ridiculous. Do you see those Lings, Banes, Ultras? Well, coming up the right-hand side there, Corruptors overhead as well. Actually, still just chilling out over the left-hand side as, again, Ultras and Banes. They are going to be moving their way down the right, ready to push in towards this high ground. Wars and Archons, well, here we go, big storm! There's only one, so all the Banes do connect. we see another good storm, and Reno's army doesn't exactly excel at this fight, but... Oh, the Stace Sword and the Raptor actually blocking Ultras! The Banes just turn around, we'll get this Nexus. 
Link is on the bottom again to pile on too. This is just again like this is this is what a game that over looks like when your opponent just won't end the game. Raynor remaxes and he still has 7,000, 4,000 in the back. Like, it's not just the fact he's back to 200, 200. It's the fact he still has tens of thousands of resources available. Eight more pros to go down. Mana has 12 workers left. He's just going to go for it. Maybe should have done this a little while ago, but I don't think there's any real winning, real winning in this. As, uh, well, here you go. I mean, in fairness, there's a bunch of corruptors that are not going to do a lot right away. Apart from just sort of hanging out. What if Raynor just wants to win the game for a Corruptor base trade? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some force on the right side. Gonna hit Storms on the Banes. Corruptors are gonna fly in for the Phoenix of the Banes. And the Ultras will just crash into all of this. And this is going to be Mana. Typing out GG to give Raynor the 2-0 lead in this best of five. Right side, our red Protoss player from Team Liquid. This is Mana. Up against the Blue Zerg. In the lower left hand side, it's Raynor. Thank us in for a quick ad break, guys. Helps to support the stream, support the tournaments. If you want to make a final donation to the Christmas Invitational this year, the exclamation mark match for Reno page is still up. Prize uh, money donated there goes towards these players. And will obviously be split quite heavily between Raynor and Mana, considering this is the finals. Yeah, Raynor is still yet to drop a map in these playoffs. 3 0 Gun 3 Banda, 3 0 Marine Lord, 3 0 Showtime, now 2 0 against Mana. Has Raynor just become too good today? He definitely seems to be back on point. He definitely seems to be back where he kind of was a little while ago. He's doing a pretty good job of it. Again, how's everyone doing out in the chat? Don't forget about that exclamation mark war chest link. Apparently the affiliate link just got updated, but I'm pretty sure the current one will still work. Let me check, actually. I just got an email saying my, my link was updated, but I can't change it very easily, very quickly, you know? I think it's still okay. I think it's still okay for the moment. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, we hit over 3k viewers. Uh, obviously, the Muslim host pushes over 3k as well. But we hit back on 3k after the, um... After the host drop-off, which was really sick. Um... Shout out to all you guys tuning in, honestly. I mean, shout out to the players as well. I said this the other day, but the players have genuinely made this uh, a real pleasure of December. They've been very awesome in playing. They've been very cooperative. They've played in a whole bunch of stuff that I've done. It's been really, really great to have them all taking part and so on. So, Shout out to all these guys that have been showing us great games, giving us some great action. And without the players showing up to play, we wouldn't have any games to cast, so... It's been a very busy December for a lot of them as well. They've been playing in my tournaments, the Take TV tournament I did with Take TV. Um, they've been playing in the Base Rate TV Tank Open. There's been some other tournaments going on, some Open Cups. There's been the Proxy Tempest Christmas Rumble, for example. There's just been so many tournaments going on. It's really been crazy. It has really been crazy, so... Shout out to all of them that still keep on playing. As you can see, the Ling is looking for a couple of adept kills here. The only game mana, only finding one drone. The Lingers and the Queens cleaned up quite nicely. Oh, Lord being uh, pushed away to the side here. There's a Stalker. Working his way through that Overlord, so... We want to be able to pick that, uh, pick up that kill. Overlord does fall. Zergen is running up the front. And the Robo Facility a pile on. Part of the wall off here. There's, uh, these things have actually been a bit of an annoyance. Part of the, uh, depth going down before. He's actually going to have to bring the Oracle back. Use its energy to take down a couple lings. Another Oracle on the way up as well. So double Oracle while the Robo in the Twilight comes in. Don't think the second Oracle was originally intended, just knowing that this first may not get so much done, gonna add a second now instead. Generally, if you go double Oracle, you go second Oracle before the Rogue and the Twilight gets stuck up. 
So obviously with the robot of the Twilight, we expect this to turn in towards an Archon drop via the Templar Archives. There's a few ways mana can change things up though. I mean, going in towards the um, charge upgrade and maybe going up to six gates to be very aggressive before you take a third is one of the ways you can change this up. There's a few different possibilities, a few different ways this Archon drop can work out. Again, maybe, I, I don't know if mana even needs to change up the early stages of the game. Um, I mean, he did a great job just with a straight up Archon drop anyways, back on uh, game number one. So, does he really need to, you know, does he really need to change things? Probably not, as the later stages where he fall apart. It's been both games the Mutalisks have actually just been so good both times around. They have been so good. So, I mean, it's definitely becoming one of the bigger issues lately. And you see a couple of oracles diving in. They do get a few drones here on the third base. Again, those things are just going to keep chasing the prism. All the way over to the left. Forge about to finish up. As you see the couple of oracles still coming all the way over here. Prism ready to warp in, but we've got the couple of oracles overhead. To protect as well, so... Pops the engine on one of them. Let's make sure to push that back. Nicely done. Roger's on the way up then, so a good response, of course, to the fact that this is an Archon drop, kind of as expected so far. Means that Reynold will be back in towards a Roach base style. Let's see what these Archons can do then. Already the first Queen taking a bit of a beating, but the Transfuse comes in. Second Transfuse will still kill the Queen. Obviously, yeah, that was only one Queen kill rather than what could have been many. Prism of the left side, Oracle's back towards the left, uh, back up through the center as well, actually. Do so you see the third Nexus dropping him down? Zergans so working their way through this robo facility here, so just dealing a little bit of damage to that robo. Yeah, the Oracle is going to team up with the Archons to fight some roaches as well. At this stage, we're going to see what Reynal wants to do. He's adding on more and more roaches. He is still already at a comfortable position. That man's third nexus hasn't been saturated just yet. Once you have this many roaches, there's always that possibility of moving across the map and being aggressive. There's no sign of an Evo chamber for an upgrade. There's no sign of anything else, including the starter walk across the map as well. This could really start to be an all-in from Reynal, where he's just looking to end this game with this one big push. He has shown his aggression a few times over the day in the PvZ, so definitely not something that we haven't seen from him before. Looks like Reynal coming all the way up to the right-hand side. A couple of Archons getting lifted up again. I'm just going to be seeing those couple of Ravagers with this also as this pylon. A little bit of trouble. Nexus taking quite a few hits. Mana's going to recall his probes away, so he goes for the natural. He's going to give up the natural. Uh, the third base, sorry, which I think is fine. Reynold just now starts to drone behind this. And his mana looks to play defense. Archons drops the first one down, gets killed instantly. Oh, Leaning a couple of roaches, catching uh, in that first stasis ward. Oh, the stasis ward's actually going to block that immortal out. Robo facility going down as part of the wall. Obviously, the immortal was saved by the war prism. At this stage, Reynold's going to start backing away with some of these roaches in case. Of, I actually don't know why. I guess because he doesn't need everything over here. Hmm. There's a lot to bring back home, though, just in kind of the force of maybe there's a warp prism coming over. I guess that's what he must be expecting, though, some sort of counterattack. Just makes, wants to make sure he doesn't take too much damage. Reynold will still spread out nicely on the low ground. Again, if he wins this, he will have won the tournament without dropping a map in the playoffs. here. Looking to try and see what it can do. A little bit of damage here and there. Mortals, Archons. Doing some hits. Oracle's trying to come down in towards the third base, but not going to be able to do too much. Stalker's pressing down. Zelda's coming down as well. Not just going to be under attack from the Oracles, but it's not enough. And the Oracles just backed away. They just stopped attacking. This one's still had energy. I don't know why it deactivated it, only to activate again. Storm ready! Storms have to be very good here as he's going to push Reynold back a little bit with the first couple. Next two coming in, and he's already, again, landing right on top of those Roaches and the Ravagers. The issue is he has to get out into the third base, otherwise he's just going to fall so far behind. Now we see Mutalisks on the way up as well. 
So we're just going to be seeing the zombies spreading out, changing, a couple of them going down. We're just still pressing in. We see another zealot cleaned up here as well. Plus two attack coming in on this forge in the main base. And stalkers, our oh, Templar, awesome. Coming over to clean up a couple of these overlords here, so just getting some damage dealt. Still seeing roaches and ravages from Reno just out the front though. I mean, yes, okay, you're going to get towards the third base now, Mana, but is it going to be, I mean, is it in time? The mutants are headed towards the main. I feel like we're already on the way in towards a very, very, uh, good position. We're going to see these probes are taking a beat in here. Six, seven workers going down already. Seven workers down. We're going to be seeing stalkers blinking in to pick off one more mutilist. A couple of shots off there. Revelation dropping on the mutas also. Still seeing these mutas just come over to the left hand side. Another storm not quite connecting just yet. And still roaches, ravages, all pushing up to the top side here. Mana may be in some trouble. A lot of trouble. Probes. Gonna jump on over as well. Blink. Halfway done. This is going to be tough right now as you see the roaches and rabbits coming in from a couple different angles. The storms are very good, but our uh, first of are doing their job as well. Reynolds remaxed with 17 more roaches. His third base on the high ground does not stand much of a chance, and Reynolds, he gets it. He knows he doesn't necessarily need to stick around here. He can back away, get the roaches and ravages to regen some health, and just go again. The Mews are still having a very good time. The Stalkers, again, they want to blink, but they just can't at the moment. He's going to jump in towards the main, getting a few of these probes. It's just more and more damage being done. Mana has been pulled apart by Mutas. I wouldn't even say this game was by Mutas per se. But he has one or two. He definitely got pulled apart by Mutas. Using them again in game three is just too much. It's the killing blow. As Raynor closes it out. Freeze.